this is developed on the concept so we can, we can have whatever we want to do. So we do another particular uh, target and sector we want to do. Yes, we could do that. But I'm not saying, none of us say that we're going to ignore the other investments or go for QPD in any of the areas. What we're saying is we've got stuff, generic stuff, that everybody else has to go there. We can say we can market ourselves at all. But this is what gives us that unique that USD. So this will be our focus for these two markets.
I think this is a, I think it is a, a really, um, I think it's a really striking um, presentation, and, and the, I think the uh, the website. I, I encourage everybody to have a look at that website. And certainly, it was it was the, it was playing at the um, at our exhibition stand at the manufacturing summit today, and a lot of people were were looking at it. So I think you know it's a much more it's a much more targeted approach than we've done in previous years. Um, and, and I, you know, really look forward to seeing the kind of fruits of this um, paying off for more jobs and investment in the world. So uh, thank you to the guys for taking us through that. Okay? Yeah. Can we note that? Can we note that presentation? Yeah. Right, that takes us then on to, uh, to item 8 uh, of the Rebel Social Care and Public Health, which is transformation of day services. And we'll ask Chris to introduce us to this. Thanks, Chris. Thank you, Chief.
So confidence to that command, that the council approves the formation of the local authority trading company, that the council agrees to the transfer to safe businesses and safe town opportunities into the local authority trading company, and then further defines the company's strategic ambitions, plans to move towards it, and its commission scope. That the council considers its council wide strategic approach and aligns appropriate other words to maximize the benefits of the expanded scope and the implementation programs established to oversee the transfer decision of services from the local authority trading company. And that cabinet receives regular updates on progression commencing in this September. And I think so you want to add one more to that. Um, yeah, okay, thanks, Chris. Um, can I just say, just sort of first of all, this is this is one of the new models of delivering services that I mentioned uh, under the Future Council program that is, I think, potentially really exciting uh, and a different way of, of delivering a, a key service within our, our, our uh, adult social services um, department. Uh, and, I, and I really think the work that's been done in conjunction with um, carers and um, the clients of this service has been, uh, has been exemplary. So uh, I want to just um, thank all, the, all those who've been involved. Um, and I think you know it's going to be really interesting to see how this uh, develops. What I was just going to suggest, because I think because it is such a new model and it's got a new governance, some new governance arrangements wrapped around it, which are going to be, you know, we will be sort of breaking, breaking new ground. Um, I think in local government, and that's good, and I'm glad that we're going to perform on that. But I think it's it's important that um, um, the business case um, that's produced for transferring day services to a trading company comes back to us first uh, for approval um, after the, the challenge process has been done, um, just so that we can satisfy ourselves that you know the model is is. Realistic and will deliver the outcomes that we want it to, uh, to deliver. So I'm simply going to add to what you moved, Chris, um, a paragraph six, which says the business case for transferring data services to local authority trading company be presented to cabinet for final approval at the conclusion of the challenge process. So uh, are we okay with, yeah. with that? Those recommendations with that additional one. Okay, and we really look forward to uh, seeing how this uh, develops. Okay. Thank you very much. Right, which takes us now to um, the items and support services. The first one is, is item nine, strategic assets management plan. Adrian. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I'm not going to read the uh, whole thing because it runs into 36 pages. Uh, indeed, I've I got my um, copy of all the piece to make sure I can give it to attention. Um, uh, January, January last year, um, the internal audit report highlighted that there were a number of high priority uh, recommendations, including the need to produce a clear asset management plan. Um, that's what this is. It's a strategic plan with details of the key um, asset priorities and the implementation plan to, 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 to deliver them uh, between now and 2017. I think we'll all read the plan and then it is But I, I, I will say that it's going to the credit professional officers to put such a huge amount of detail work into producing what I think is an absolutely excellent uh, document. So uh, with that, uh, my recommendation is to be approved then. Okay, thanks Adrian. Uh, and I think this is a really comprehensive document. I, I, the only thing I want to add is, is you know, uh, congratulations and thank you to David Armstrong and his team. So no one can all to Jeanette as well. Sorry, Jeanette. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So David and Jeanette particularly mentioned in dispatches, um, and I think it's a really comprehensive document and, and really kind of set the kind of framework for our asset, asset management uh, strategy and plans going forward. So I'm happy to uh, support you, David, in saying that we uh, we we endorse this plan. Can we agree with that, Cabinet? Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, on to item ten. Um, Will Council Grange Road Birkenhead compulsory purchase order for 2008? Well, this one is a disturbance claim which relates to relocation costs and 
This report sets out the proposed method of helping rural livelihood enterprises in the face of the ongoing financial pressures the whole authority faces as we review all the given the overall available funds that are reduced now. As a major service, libraries cannot be exempt from reducing their costs to help the overall county decision. We know other authorities in the local area have already closed lines already, but we do recognise the importance of our libraries as a frontline service to the public, which is of absolutely vital we look at all alternatives that continue to support them. We all have a library network of 24 sites, which are broadly in three types, with four central libraries, five larger sites, which are now merged with our one-stop shops, and 15 community library sites of varying size. We all is incredibly fortunate to have a very strong base of supported friends, users, and local community groups at many of our libraries already, for which we are extremely grateful. This report seeks approval to approach local community and voluntary groups to explore their views and levels of interest and support for community library sites. The report will decide that the authority will discuss these areas with groups, ensuring members agree and that the public are aware of this being undertaken. This will include looking at all health and additional purchases for volunteering support, or, as has occurred in other authorities, where local groups have been able to offer much more substantial support, <coughs> which includes the running of the site. Understanding what local volunteers and community groups are able to successfully offer enables us to know what can be done and how this will help. Agreeing the report will allow us to get to that point. If approved, officers will engage groups and report back on findings that will allow the cabinet to decide if and how any proposals are taken forward. No substantial change will be made without public and staff consultation. In doing this, we are asking clear libraries will do their best to reduce costs as is expected of all other services in the authority. But there are absolutely no proposals on the table to close any libraries. We are exploring all options for the service as is only, under, only right under the challenging financial circumstances the whole authority faces. And I ask the cabinet to agree this report. But can I also ask Phil, I'd like to say a big, big thank you to all our library staff, all our one stop shops, shop staff, because there's been a lot of bad publicity about what's happening with our library. So I hope this tonight shows that we are committed into trying not to close any of our libraries. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Um, yeah, and I'd just like to kind of reiterate, I think there was some pretty irresponsible reporting by the press earlier this week, actually. Um, which, you know, um, you, you know, you, you sort of take it on the chin, really, in, uh, in politics and what's going on. But I just, I do think it was irresponsible uh, to claim that we were closing libraries when, as you made it very clear, um, that, that is not the case. However, you did, uh, Chris, highlight the challenging financial circumstances. And again, those challenging financial circumstances brought about by, by a government that clearly does not care about what it's about. And that's why we're having to look at these um, these options. It would be irresponsible for us not to explore um, more innovative ways of, of delivering the service. Uh, and I think, um, you know, we, we know that there are lots of um, uh, community organisations, individual residents, friends groups, who would be interested in taking a, a, a higher sort of profile role in running community facilities like libraries, and we would be mad to not take advantage of that interest and that commitment. So I think it's, it's prudent, sensible, um, but I, I just, you know, and maybe it's a full you know, I just wish the press would be a little more responsible on how they report these kind of things. I'm not engaging in scurrying, really, which, which I'm afraid um, some comments from um, the leader of the Conservative group just so anyway, um, I think you've made the position clear, Chris, and um, I'm, I'm happy to support you in, in agreeing that recommendation in, in paragraph 12. Is that agreed? Agreed. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, that takes us on then to item 14, which is the World Council and the Gentle Living Community Fund. And Stuart is uh, is leading the room. Yeah. So. We'll ask 
George to introduce us, please, George. Yeah. Um, <coughs> History Board release.